Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So hello and welcome to the uh, UN Global Compact Leader Summit 21. Uh, we're back in conversation, uh, the road 2030 via Pakistan. And I'm delighted that today we're joined with some amazing people doing some really great stuff on the SDGs. We're going to hear from them in terms of their journey and moving from ambition to action. We've got uh, Feroz Patel, Joint CEO of Quantum 5. Joining him are Mohsin Nishtat, who's leading sustainability at Sapphire Textile Mills. And then we've also got Greg Clark, who's the sustainability director at Quantum 5. Uh, welcome, guys. Asalaamu Alaikum. And welcome to the Leader Summit. Alaikum Salaam. Hi. Uh, alaikum Salaam. So for those of you who are listening into this uh, at the session uh, on the 15th and 16th of June, um, if you're going to do any social media posting, then do remember the following hashtags, which are Uniting Business, Quantum Effect, and obviously um, Leading the World by Example. Uh, we are going to talk casually today, guys, about why it's important to be setting a baseline for the SDGs. Obviously, we're making plenty of assumptions that the SDGs are important to us all as companies, as individuals, as society as a whole. Um, we understand the impact of the SDGs, and we kind of understand already where we'd like to be uh, holistically in terms of the SDGs, on 1st of January 2030, but also where we'd like to be on 2030, uh, 1st of January for our companies, organizations, and the organizations that we represent. What we want to try and find out from you today is a little bit about what that journey looks like for you. Um, what are the steps that you've been taking or are about to embark on so that that can be a springboard or a platform for other people to take inspiration from, uh, reach out to you as well, and also learn from in terms of your stories and insights so that they can navigate that space as well. And again, for those of you who would like to connect with Mohsin, Greg, or Feroz, you can reach out to them through LinkedIn, or you can uh, reach them through uh, the UN Global Compact uh, Network as well. So uh, again, like I say, welcome to this session. It's a pleasure to have you on board. I know this is gonna be a great conversation. We're not gonna get through absolutely everything that we want to. Um, I'm gonna start off, uh, Feroz, uh, by sort of coming over to you in terms of understanding um, why it's important for us to have direction um, to be able to deliver on the SDGs. I mean, the UN has already set out what the SDGs are. There are 17 goals and there are plenty of indicators behind them. Uh, it's, it, would, it can be said it's quite easy just to pick, you know, one of the SDGs or one of the indicators and say, all right, that's the one we're gonna go for. Most people, uh, there seems to be a trend around gender or climate. Let's pick that one, let's do that. But you need to have a little bit more of an understanding around the direction rather than the destination, right? Could you just give us your thoughts and insights with companies that you've been working with around that? Absolutely, Zabir. So, uh, look, thanks for having me on. And it's a great starter for five. Um, so, look, the first thing to understand is this. The Gs are the closest thing that we have to a global sustainable development strategy. And it's the global language of, for sustainability amongst national and local governments, businesses, and community groups. And it covers a whole comprehensive range of issues, uh, which takes a holistic systems-based thinking approach. Um, and it focuses on reducing inequalities and supporting society's most marginalized people. And the thing that's great about the SDGs is they provide a cross-cutting framework which is supported by a set of indicators and targets, which is so important. Um, and in terms of development issues, which are embedded in those SDG goals, um, they're so pertinent to South Asia and to developing countries. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, they, they form part of the day-to-day -day matters companies like uh, Moshin's company, Sapphire, are already addressing at every point in their value chain, regardless of whichever sector uh, or business that they're operating in. And of course, the other thing to really um, uh, just to just to kind of uh, share is the SDGs offer companies both a business opportunity and a framework to manage operational risks. Right? Um, so, so it, you know, the global goals, as they're known as, shouldn't be viewed as another compliance requirement, uh, which they're not. But the issues that are highlighted in SDGs, renewable energy, workforce development, gender equity, responsible consumption, among so many others, mm -hmm. have such a direct impact 
on corporate profitability, sustainability, and risk environment. You know, basically planet, people, prosperity. Yeah. And, and look, just before, uh, one more thing to say. I mean, we all know, we all know here that um, sustainable businesses are, are the most successful businesses. And through addressing sustainability agendas now and getting ahead of the curve, the change curve, which is coming, uh, which is going to impact all businesses. Um, Quantum 5 and myself, you know, working with many other businesses, um, we've realised that you can leverage a competitive advantage through proactive business transformation that aligns the business with future regulatory uh, issues that are around the corner, uh, but also with buyers and customer trends and requirements, which I think is so important for, for so, so it's ahead of it's getting ahead of the game, I guess, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Greg, I, I, I want to just stretch that conversation a little bit further. You work with companies all over the world um, around the mapping engine that you've developed and you use technology, but there's a very much a hard and fast people component to that. Is it important in your view that companies need to understand that there's a journey to take as well, that it's not just let me pick out the SDG that feels the most relevant to me as an individual leading this institution or as a company because it sits well or because it's something that is a little bit more understood, perhaps. So we all understand climate to some extent. Is it important to understand the journey and understand that it's going to be a difficult journey as well? Or is it just, you know, there's Everest, it's fine, I'm fit. Let me just, you know, go out on a Sunday afternoon and, and climb the mountain. I have to unmute. Th thank you for the question, Zabir. And um, it's a good question. And it's probably the central question to engagement with the SDGs. Um, for, for, for us, I could talk, um, I could talk until um, uh, I'm blue in the face. about the, the technological wizard knowledge. I'm here to talk about how companies engage with, with, with the, the, the SDGs. So for me, I mean, the companies I work with have a three-stage journey. Um, and the first is the baseline, which is establishing an overall company-wide impact assessment of where they are and their effect on society and particularly the environment. But then having established a, a baseline it's really looking at how to target from that baseline the key indicators. Um, and, and, and through the, the, the business transformation then, uh, the educating of staff, the holistic change of the whole business. So many businesses will start addressing sustainability issues through little silos. I can make a change here. This is an easy win. And, and, and that works to some extent, but in mm -hmm. our experience, if you do not take a company-wide holistic view, at the best, you're risking poor resource utilization. But you know, at, at, at the very worst, you're looking at detrimental change to other parts of the business, having tried to make changes to, to one silo or another. So it's very much our, our, our approach to, to look at the company as a whole, as a system. And then the final stage in that journey is how do you communicate that to the stakeholders? So how do you educate staff? Mm -hmm. How do you reach out to your buyers, to your customers? How do you make sure that the sustainable change and the journey that you're on as an organization ripples out to your wider stakeholders? Um, and I think to echo what Faraz said earlier, uh, Martin Luther King said, there's a fierce urgency of now. And the way, the way I'd said is that there will be only two types of business in 2030. There right. will be those that have sustainably tr uh, transformed their business and their, their models and their operation. And there'll be those that aren't with us anymore or are being outcompeted by the former. So yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it's a journey and it needs to start now. I, I'm also, I just um, jump in there, as, yeah. as you did say, oh. um, jump in. Um, just one more thing to add on that, Greg. I think I think you're absolutely spot on. And, and there's one more thing which um, we've, we've we've come across over the last uh, 
last two years, it's, it's important to note that not all of the SDGs, the 17 goals, uh, and the underlying targets of equal relevance to every company and sector as well. Um, and so some resonate more strongly with some businesses and their risks and opportunities than others. And it's really important for businesses to focus on those specific SDG targets that will help the company. Uh, and to define its SDG related business priorities more clearly uh, and to implement more effective action and report on that impact than trying to focus on all 17, because that, that's just not realistic. And what yeah. we've seen actually is that when companies start to define their SDGs which are most related to its business priorities, um, they find amazing innovation opportunities that would not have been apparent immediately mm-hmm. And when they were looking at it as a holistic 17 goals, you know, really mm. drilling down onto which ones are relevant to us, and you start to see great innovation and focus uh, on those on those um, uh, global goals, which are which are important. So, sorry, I just I just thought I really put no, I, I I think that's a value point that you've brought up. It's probably a conversation that will lead on to after after today, and that just reminds me that through our own conversations within the global compact with not just established businesses who are now looking at SDGs or businesses who have got SDGs already established in their business, um, that it's actually okay to balance profit with purpose. It's okay to make money. It's okay to look at the SDGs as a way that you can drive your business forward and engage with your stakeholders um, with profit behind it. And I think it's about balancing all of that. So, So we will have that conversation around profit with purpose. Mohsen, I want to come over to oh, one. you. You yeah. obviously lead sustainability at Sapphire. Um, you, you, you've got a kind of very clear idea. Idea is the wrong word. A very clear destination of where you'd like to be as an organization. But you started the journey with establishing, I mean, you were doing corporate social responsibility, and I guess SDGs for you are taking you beyond, beyond CSR. What's it been like for you on this journey? You know, have, has it all just been, okay, that's it, fine. You know, we're, on, we're doing the SDGs and job done. Or has, is there a lot more to it than in terms of the internal stakeholders that you're engaging with and trying everyone, trying to get everyone to understand, as Firo said, this universal language or framework of how to do business in a better way? What, what's been your kind of insights and what's your story? Yeah, thanks for your question. And hi, everyone. I think before I answer your question, if you allow me, I would like to start off by saying that, uh, like Greg and uh, Feroz Bhai has just said, I think it's more of an evolutionary journey. So I, I think it's not like that you have 17 things to pick up from a rack, and you just go and pick four or five, whatever you like. I think that uh, maybe uh, in the shorter term, you might have an idea that maybe SDG4, poverty, hunger, or maybe education uh, are looking more relevant to you at the start. But you, when you put your honest brain, which is actually the company's brain behind this whole concept of sustainability, I personally feel that then you evolve and maybe at a later stage, some other goals, which can be at the farther end, like goal 16 or 17, might become more relevant to you and you want to spend more time, effort, and energy into that. So that's what my uh, thought about the first portion to that. And now when I come back to my organization, I think it's, it's I, I would say that it has been a, a long heritage of doing CSR. And a few of the things which we so far in these past months have to actually put or trying to put into motion or commution is that, that there is a difference between spending money and actually creating sustainable business for future. For future of the organization, for future of the community we work in, for future of our employees, as well as for future of our customers and wider society. So I think so far the journey has been ourselves clarifying inside our mind that what is in the short term we actually want to drive out of this initiative and what in the long term FI should be contributing to in the bigger frame or scheme of things being one of the largest textiles mm. across Pakistan. And if I just quote you, so um, 
one of the things so it's a it's a bit on a lighter note so when i was young i read a quote and i just wanted to quote and then maybe share that i think that this this is this should be the perspective when we start these type of initiatives even at a smaller scale in an organization and the quote goes like this that if you think that you are too small to be effective perhaps you have never slept with a mosquito in your bed so so that's how that's how some small 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 steps can create havoc if put in the right direction and that's what our journey has been to craft those small steps and then for the longer future what should we do as organization to make a difference so that has been so far our journey and do you think you know you mentioned that you've got a history and legacy of corporate responsibility and and that has a great place in society even to this day and it will do um, as we move forward with the sdgs they're kind of inter interconnected interlinked um do you think or how important do you think is to establish where you are currently i mean it's all well and great to say these sdgs make sense to me you know holistically and we should should be doing something for the world and impact and you know as greg said either we're in the the pool of people or businesses that are doing something or we're not we're left behind and it's great to have a visionary leader in the organization whether that be ceo ceo or even even the chief of sustainability leading this and then you've mapped out somewhat of a journey or at least you think this is how we'd like to do things how important is it for you as an organization and for other people in organizations similar to your size and and respectfully your pretty big organization that we underestimate looking at into pakistan how important is it to establish where you are currently to so do this baseline this is where we sit right now and understanding are we actually comfortable with where we sit right now being surprised and overwhelmed actually we're doing a lot more than we thought we were doing and also understanding that maybe we're not doing enough so how important is is mapping out where you are and, and establishing a baseline for you and and for other people so i think it's absolutely important without a baseline then uh, what i feel and even larger organizations other larger organizations like mine would be shooting in the dark yes there are absolute clear sdg goals available there are indicators and measurement kpis already available but still you need to know that where do you stand in terms of some reference point we might think that we are doing whatever we are doing and that has to be the best but if we go into that mode i think we will become complacent and never improve that's not how societies mankind and organizations have actually improved so you have to be having that mindset of being uh, not negatively uncomfortable which with what you do but still being uncomfortable with the thirst that what can i do better where can i move forward so and that's the mindset which i think having these formal baseline assessment etc talking to professionals like all three of you and maybe others in the world take you so it's absolutely important Greg, Greg, what's your thought on the need for having that baseline? Does it make yeah. the journey easier? Thank you, um, and thank you for for. for I, I think uh, Moshin said something very, very key there, and it's it's the complacency argument. It's it's a commitment to change. It's a line in the sand, and if you haven't drawn that line in the sand and say beforehand, lie lay a, a non joined up. um spotty approach to towards our sustainability agenda and we did some csr and we looked at this and that and then the line in the sand is this comprehensive baseline where you look at all of your operations not just the primary you look at you look at the secondary you look at everything from refrigeration to energy to transport once that line in the sand is drawn and you have a deep understanding of of the company's uh, environmental and societal impact then it allows you not only to make the choices that are right for your business model and and, and as you said earlier uh, choices that often lead to much improved in the long term profitability because you're investing in 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 all sorts of 
um, processes and technologies which will save money but require initial investment. Um, and I think for, for me that this deep understanding, this line also allows you um, a, a great narrative, a great story about how your company chose to look at themselves in absolute totality and then look at where they are in five years, look at where they are in 10 years. And the story of that business transformation becomes part of the story of your business. Um, so I do think it's key. And I think um, it, it can be often very da daunting for a lot of companies um, because one, there's the fear of what will we uncover? Um, there's the fear of all sorts of pressure from external stakeholders of what they must do and will it threaten their business model? I don't see it like that. I see it as an absolute opportunity to relook at how you do things, what your business model is, and to become future-proof because the business models that have been working will not be working in 10 years' time. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that really, for me, is the baseline. It's the line in the sand and mm -hmm. uh, beyond which are the sunny uplands. <laughs> Feroz, you, you've worked with companies who are on different parts of many different journeys. Um, and I won't dwell on your previous life in the humanitarian sector, but you must have come across you know, plenty of, uh, or, or had plenty of conversations, should I say, or uncomfortable conversations where people are trying to work out what their journey towards 2030 should be. And then the business changes that they need to make and uncomfortable conversations internally, I guess, where it's like, well, that's going to cost money or we can't do that in three months. That's going to take five years to implement or that requires investment and training and development. How do you navigate those conversations? And what is it that you've been saying to people, people like Morsin, who are clearly champions of sustainability and really want to embark on this journey? who are meeting challenges perhaps from, I'm not saying from internal stakeholders, but you know, just the processes don't allow them to move forward on that journey. What have you been saying? What have you been doing to sort of help on that? That's a great question. Um, so there's, uh, look, I mean, I think it takes a huge amount of courage from a, from a leadership perspective. Um, it takes a huge amount of courage to push back against um, the status quo. So at board level, um, and at C-suite level, I think strong and visionary leadership is, is, is the first thing. And that takes huge amounts of courage because you start to have difficult conversations up there talking about business transformation. Um, and also, I suppose it's critical. One of the other things is it's actually critical taking everyone on that journey with you. So how do you take your, your senior leadership team and you know, upstream, downstream, everyone with you on that journey. You know, to, to be honest, um, today where we are, um, a, a real, I think a strong business case has to be made for supporting the SDGs across your leadership team. Because otherwise mm -hmm. what you end up with is conversation about why are we doing this? Is this just SDG washing or CSR washing? You know, th this used to be kind of the language we used to hear five years ago. But what we are seeing now are leaders who are really stepping up to the plate who really understand, just to reinforce what Martin and Greg has been saying, what we've just said, um, that if you don't transform your business, you're not going to be around in 10 years. Mm. The world has changed. Consumer, consumers are making you know, choices based around what matters to them. And, you know, from millennials to now Gen Z, who are consumers, they are demanding that, you know, the, the, you know it goes back to kind of that, that key um, introduction that, you talked about as well about planet, people, and prosperity. All three things can coexist, but you know they have to align. And you know a, a couple of other things to throw in there. I mean, you know it's really important uh, that everyone understands the business case across uh, the whole company. Um, it's also very important um, that when you carry out uh, an assessment, when we're carrying out assessments, that. Um, it's looked at as a point of reference um, for progress that you're making as a company over the next 10 years, because the runway is 10 years, right? That's yeah, rather than the more day. yeah. A absolutely. Um, and it has to be kind of viewed in that way, in which this is a journey, it's a 10-year journey. And how, and do you how, think, 
Yeah, sure. Sorry, I'm interrupting just on the point. Do, do you think then it's okay for those those leaders who are having the business case presented to them, or the business leaders who are part of this group of twelve and a half thousand people that are at this summit uh, over these twenty six hours? It's okay for them to be a little bit more. Um, I, I, the only word I can think of right now is being open, transparent. Uh, but I mean that in a positive way, not that they're hiding anything. So it's okay for them to say, actually, I'm on a journey. I, I, I kind of know the destination and I know it's going to be hard work and I know we're not going to get everything right, but it's a journey. And then just talk about being on that journey. Is that okay to be, you know, in this, the way the world it is today? Is that okay? I, 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 absolutely. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass over to Martin because he can speak from yeah. his own experience. But the, the CEO of Sapphire, he, he has put his head above the parapet. He said, this is a journey that we are undertaking because we want to be a you know, a gold standard, a benchmark, if you like, of businesses in Pakistan who are sustainable businesses. I mean, they're already doing amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the issue is at the moment, it's not, it, it, you know, it, it's measuring it, it's measuring it. So let me, let, let me before I pass on, just give a, uh, something which I think is a great way to kind of uh, talk about why benchmarking is important. Um, and in, the, in the context of it's a 10-year journey, right? What gets reported gets measured. What gets measured gets managed. What gets managed gets embedded in executive mindsets. And what managers report shapes the way that they think. And I think that's really important. That's what a benchmark helps to do. So over to Moshin, and, and just to kind of maybe um, uh, talk yeah. about the leadership journey yeah. at, at, at Sapphire. So one, one, I think one thought I would like to add on to this previous discussion, I think this in the current time, which, is, which are the times of pandemic, I think it's very imperative. We all have realized two, three things. First, everyone is indispensable, but the word goes on. Uh, it's hell lot of uncertainty around, but yet results still get delivered. So I think that that pandemic has actually taught us valuable lessons. And now it's the time, though this whole journey, as far if I recall correctly, that it started a couple of years back and formally in 2015, but starting 2020, everyone knows that if we have to be in the future of work, there is no other way to sustain towards that, to transform towards that, to take quantum leaps towards what you are doing right now. And you were very right that the, this is not a magic wand. It is actually a transformational journey with people, with a lot of processes, a lot of machines and products around you. So there has to be a structured mechanism with milestones, some of the quick wins, some of the long-term ambitions, which actually keep you going through the ultimate goal, which when we reach closer to that goal might be totally different for the next 10 years. And that's how you keep evolving, 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 and get refined and then get better and better and better. I think that's the vicious circle of life. So I think uh -huh. that's what keeps us going also. And I, and, with, and I would like just a moment, I would like to uh, take three, use three words. The mantra which we want to, we are pushing towards in our organization, particularly during this journey is the way we are calling it as R-O-I-M. And R is for recycle, O is for organic, I is for innovate, and M is for morale and motivation of people. So we will craft a sustainability journey, journey using these four things in each and everything we do from now onwards. Now that's amazing, Austin. Um, I, I guess also one of the things that you'll highlight as you do this ROI MM uh, initiative and you're on the SDGs journey is that you'll find your own champions, your kind of global ambassadors within your own organization and your stakeholders. Because remember, uh, you have an influence on responsible procurement. And I know that's, some, that's an initiative that's coming out of the Pakistan office. Um, so how does it make you feel not just knowing that you've got a vision, a mindset uh, in place at the leadership level, that you've been given a lot of responsibility, but with it power uh, to change the way the organization is working. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a journey. How does it 
make you feel emotionally or my heartfelt, as they say, and mindset, knowing that you're going to meet more people like you on the journey. And, and then this global summit today is 12 and a half thousand people could be 120,000 people. And we're all talking about the journey that we've been on and what more we need to do to go beyond 2030. What kind of sentiments do you feel when you think of the champions that will come through Sapphire? So I think that, uh, yeah, a couple of it's, it's uh, a couple of sentiments inside me. One, one thing which is very clear, first of all, in me is that, that I am going to learn a lot in this journey, make maybe uh, towards the end of the journey, there will be a relaunch motion as a professional. And then there will be numerous other relaunched professionals who are far better in their work, who understand the totality of things, not doing their own line function, but what is the effect of their action onto the results of others. And that's how I think that's the main thing which is which keeps me going towards on this journey that this is uh, not one, maybe it's a huge multiplier effect thing which has its own uh, merits and motivations as a professional when I think uh, for myself and my peers and colleagues. Great, fantastic. Guys, we are out of time, but the conversation doesn't stop here. Thank you so much for your insight, sharing some of your stories. There's clearly a lot more to discuss and a lot more to learn from these types of conversations. Those types of conversations We'll be continuing over the next 26 hours at the Leader Summit, but we'll be back, obviously, to talk to you more. But just before you go, um, I want to ask you uh, a moment of reflection, perhaps, but reflection in an unusual way. This is take a moment to reflect, take a deep breath, perhaps, and think forward to 2030. So I want, I want you to imagine yourself wherever you may be in the world um, with more gray hairs or less. Um, 1st of January 2030 and you uh, have your lovely coffee in your hand and you wake up in the morning and you're able to look back at the last 10 years. Uh, Bhai, what does your 1st of January 2030 look like? Looking back in the last 10 years and thinking, what a great way to have spent the last 10 years changing the world, like really kind of, legacy, leaving behind a legacy and, and, and hopefully the world is in, not hopefully, the world is in a fantastic place in 10 years time, that's what I like to be, I'm optimist. Great, nice sentiment. Uh, Greg, what's your 1st of January 2030 looking like? Well, to, to, to echo what Moshin said, um, it's, it's one of professional transformation. We're all learning, not, not just that sustainability is important on an issue, but sustainability is important on every issue as a totality. Um, and I think my, my, my cup of coffee will be rolling up my sleeves and saying, and now what? Because the journey doesn't end. It goes on and uh, we're aiming for 2030. But until we've left a, a, a planet and a business community that our children and grandchildren can inherit and thrive in, uh, the work continues. Excellent. Austin? What does your first of January twenty like? Yeah, so there will be two clear things. I think first regarding my company that I will have a feeling of satisfaction that my organization is one of the leading innovative sustainable textiles across the world, not only in Pakistan, and that will give me uh, another feeling that yes, you played a role in making this world a better place, but way to go. Excellent. Guys, thank you so much for your sentiments. Thank you for your uh, honesty and openness. Um, this is really valuable for those people who are not just looking to start the journey, but those who are already on the journey towards 2030. Um, as I said, we'll be back for more conversations in due course. Um, and just one last point for those of you that are listening in to this session, there are still 20 plus hours more of the Leader Summit to go. So do dip in and dip out of all the sessions. Take lots of learning, do share them with other people. And when you're posting on social media, don't forget the hashtags Uniting Business, uh, Quantum Effect, and obviously Global Compact. Um, we'll be back for more sessions uh, during this 26 hour marathon. 
and uh, take care for now.